Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at the Ultimate Dungeon Master Toolkit. Well, should I say this is my Ultimate Dungeon Master Toolkit. These are the tools that I use when I'm going to run a D&D game. Now this video is in response to Indestructo Boy, who put out a video showing off his Ultimate Dungeon Master Toolkit. I'll put a link in the description below. But he issued a challenge to fellow YouTubers to put out their own video, so this one is mine. Now stay tuned to the end of this video, I'll put out a challenge to a few of my YouTube friends as well. So let's go ahead and get started and get this piece out of the way. Of course I use a Dungeon Master screen. Now I have a few but this has become one of my favorite. This is from the Monsters of the Multiverse set and I use DM screens primarily to be able to give myself an area to work within but also the conditions because I forget about them all the time. This is a book that I like to have on my person at all times. This is Volo's Guide to Waterdeep. And I don't have to be running Waterdeep to be able to use this book. There's so many different taverns and businesses and things like that. So if I need a place to input a some type of a shop or a bar or something like that, an inn, what have you, I have all kinds of them right at my fingertips. I also carry with me this dry erase board that has grid squares on it and I like to do that if I'm playing a lot of theater of their mind. Sometimes I do have to draw out a map for the players so I'm able to do that. And of course if I'm running theater of the mind and I need to give a little bit of an idea of what combat might be taking place, I can draw that out as well. And of course with the dry erase boards they clean up really nicely. I found it to be a very good tool. Now one of my favorite accessories is this dice tray by theplasticdragon.net. Now they sent this to me for a review and you can find that video on my channel, but I absolutely love this and I take it with me all the time. The plastic pieces come right out and connect so we have a dice tray and we have a nice little hair area here to be able to roll dice and of course we have a dice tray below that we can fill up with dice. Now this is my collection of travel dice. Now I don't take all of these with me, but I will pick a few sets and put them in my dice tray before I head out to run a game. Now some of my favorite dice are by IceCreamDice.com and I'll definitely put a link in the description below. Now why I like them so much is because most of them are 11 piece sets as opposed to 7 piece sets. Here you can see my candy corn dice from IceCreamDice.com and we have 3 extra D6s and an extra D20. I absolutely love that. So I have the candy corn, I have the root beer float, the Christmas candy cane, the kiwi, and quite a few other ones. And I have a few more on the way. Now I do have two sets that only stay at home that are very important to me. I have this set by Die Hard Dice. This is a metal set that my friend Immortal Origins sent me. And I also have this handcrafted gemstone set that has my name on it and I keep these for home. This is a set that my wife gifted me for Christmas one year. Now I do have some specialty dice. These are some of my favorites. I have a weather die here. I have a race and class die here in case I need to make an adventure right off the top of my head. And some alignment dice just to see what kind of personality traits they have. I have a few unique 12 sided, 6 sided dice some astrology and symbols, and of course some directions. But probably my favorite set of specialty dice is this set of poker dice. I've had these for about 30 some years, and I really find them very helpful if we need to do a quick game of cards or something in, a tent, in an inn or tavern environment, and we can just do a few rolls of these and settle a card game. Now I also have this portion of my DM toolkit that I'll take with me and this has a lot of neat little items. These are some hidden gems that you might not be familiar with. Now I will include my puzzle pieces in here if I am planning on running a puzzle. Maybe some quest item cards that I might be planning to give out. Now as far as inspiration goes, I like to use these jumbo D20s. You can see the difference in size there. And what I like to do is I just like to assign each of the players a color and if they get inspiration I hand them this die they can roll this die and then they give it back to me when they've expended their inspiration so I really like the using these because it sits out in front of them and they'll remember to use it now I also have a set of Rory story cubes just in case I need to come up with some ideas they're all always good with generating ideas on the spot maybe a trap or some type of magical item now this is an item that I purchased off of Amazon and these are just some hourglass timers with different degrees of time. We have a 30 second, a one minute, two minute, three minute, 
5 and 10. And I like to use these for puzzles in particular. The 2, 5, and 10 at 2 minutes I would give a clue. At 5 minutes another clue and at 10 minutes I should have the puzzle should have been solved by now and let's see what's going on. But I also like to use these in areas such as combat. Maybe I put this 5 minute timer out on the table and the characters are watching it go down and then once this expires maybe another monster joins a fray or something with the environment changes to make some changes in combat. And maybe we do this with regards to if they're searching a warehouse and we can put this out there. They're searching a warehouse. I'll put that timer out there. Once that 10 minute timer expires, if they're still there, then perhaps somebody's going to show up and catch them in the act of snooping around. Now I also have these runes in here. I'm not really too sure what to do with these runes, but I carry them with me just in case and I'm sure I'll come up with an idea at some point. In fact, I've got this rune card that came with this set of runes that has some neat ideas on there. So in addition to the runes, the name of the runes, it also has a one word thing like emotions and harmony and happiness and repetition. So I'm sure I'll do something with those someday. Now, speaking of which, I also have a deck of tarot cards. I've never used these in a game, but I'm carrying them with me. They're from my friend Immortal Origins, and I believe they are by Die Hard Dice. So if you'd like to pick up those, you can visit Die Hard Dice and get yourself a set of tarot cards. And I should probably at least show you a few of them. They're absolutely beautiful. So those are really cool. Now I also have some cards in here and I just printed these off on yellow paper and laminated them with tape, but these are all of the different tool sets. So if the characters are wondering what their tools do, then I've got these quick reference cards for tools that they can take a look at. And I find having them on hand actually helps for myself as far as running a game as well. Now let's take a look at my favorite part of my Dungeon Master Toolkit, and that is the cards that I use. I absolutely love cards that are nice and compact, they fit in my DM Toolkit, and they are great for doing information, whether improv or just want some random elements in your game. Now let's take a look at the cards that I do have. Now I do not take all of these with me to a game, but I will pick two or three decks to take with me, depending on what it is I'm going to be running. Now if I need quest ideas, I have the deck of many quests. This is by Lunch Break Heroes. He's a fellow YouTuber and in fact I just backed his second Kickstarter where he has a bunch of quests and things of that nature coming up to add on to this edition. And I really like these but I usually use quests more for prep and I do have a second thing of quest decks. Now these here are made by DiceDungeons.com and I really like these as well. They're very simple. They're easy to use. I may take one of these with me at some point just to be able to pull out a quick quest. They're a little bit more simple as compared to the deck of many quests. So again, I like the deck of many quests for prep, but if I want some quest ideas to take with me to a game, then I'll probably grab one of these decks here, either the Notice Board or Grim Adventures. Next up, I have Objects of Intrigue. Now these are encounter decks by Nord Games, and I absolutely love these, especially for playing improv. We have Dungeon, Waterways, Underground, and Wilderlands. So if I wanted to be able to thumb through here and find a quick encounter, especially for the wilderness, which is a little hard to do sometimes. So for example, we can find this eerie stone well. It provides a description that you can read to your players. It describes what's going to happen. And then you can roll either a D4 or a D12, whatever it is on the table, to see what the results are or to see what the secret is behind that area. Again, I absolutely love these and I ran an entire improv game just using these and it was a lot of fun. My next set of cards is also by Nord Games and that's the Treasure Trove and I absolutely love these. I usually take the challenge rating 5 to 8 with me and what these are is simply just treasure cards and I'll just pull one of these out. Usually if the characters are all searching a different area, I'll pull out a card for each character and then I'll have the player roll a d12 to see what type of individual treasure that they're going to find. I absolutely love these things and I also always bring at least one or two decks with me to whatever game that I'm running. Now speaking of treasure, I also have Dungeon Discoveries. Now this is a Loresmith product and again I will put links in the description be below. Loresmith puts out a lot of great things but I really like this one so for fumbled searches. So sometimes the characters just insist that they're going to find something behind a couch or underneath a table so I'll pull these out and give them something weird. Now the way it works you can either roll a d4 for these or you can just pick one. So here for example I could pick Flea Ridden and then match it up with something below. So a flea-ridden old bedroll. 
or like this one here we have a torn and fouled lace nightgown or a severely worn sandstone statue so these are what's called fumbled searches which is probably not going to bring up any value but use your imagination sometimes these actually turn into quest items so they'll find something from the past and it'll be a quest item and we'll go from there and sometimes i'll even turn into magic items that i'll give to the players i'll homebrew something and just for more examples here here's some curious treasures so example a glowing emerald amber bead or a glowing emerald tree god temple or naturally shaped wheelbarrow i mean some of these are kind of ridiculous but you can pick and decide what you want to give them I also have this deck of wild shapes for 5th edition. This is by ArcaneGoods.com and if I have a druid in the party then I'm going to give them this and it has all of their possible wild shapes with 5th edition stats and I absolutely love this thing. It makes me want to play a druid. I've never used it but I do have access to the Taroka deck as well for Curse of Strahd. I'm sure I'll come up with a use for that someday. And my final four decks, I absolutely love these. These are Dossier decks by Skeleton Skeleton Key Games. And I bought these in person at Gamehole Con in 2021, talking to the folks that were selling them. And these are absolutely amazing for coming up with NPCs. We have merchants, commoners, orcs and goblins, and mages. So if we needed perhaps some type of a merchant, then I ha I'll have this deck with me. And the way that it works is if you look at the back, we have appearance, we have story hook, and we have traits. So we'll just take this, we'll flip over an appearance card, we'll flip over a story hook, and we'll flip over some traits. So now we have this NPC that we can show the characters, and that is Talni Barkova. The dark eyed character is quite beautiful despite a large facial scar. And then she'll have this, which is a few of her story hooks that you can use for your game. And then, of course, her traits and whatever you want to do with those. So all the glitters, beware the dark arts, and important for the watch. And again, you can take these and you can mix them up. So you can have a different NPC every time. So if we don't like that person, we can put this here. We can rotate them out and have different NPCs. But not only that, but these are interchangeable with the other decks. So we can mix the appearance decks with the other decks and the story hooks and the traits. So I enjoy having these and they're fantastic for coming up with NPCs on the go. And the last few items that I'll take with me when running a game is my DM binder where I keep a lot of things such as NPCs, appearances, gemstones, and some random tables. I have a folder where I'll keep all types of game notes and things if I'm going to be running a puzzle and maybe some monster stat blocks from other books that I don't want to carry with me. I always have a notebook and this is where I keep track of all the combat battles, initiative, and things like that. And I have one per campaign. And then, of course, the books that always go with me is the Monster Manual. You can always run stuff out of there. And, of course, my own book, the Journal of Puzzle Encounters. I feel with the Journal of Puzzle Encounters, I can always just do an improv one-shot just using these two books if I need to. And, of course, the previously mentioned go Guide to Waterdeep. So again, that is my Ultimate Dungeon Master Toolkit. Be sure to leave a comment below and let me know what goes in your Dungeon Master Toolkit if you're running games. And I want to say thank you again to Indestructiboy for putting forth this challenge for the Ultimate DM Toolkit. Be sure to check out his video. I'll put a link below. And now I'd like to challenge my fellow YouTubers. Ted from Nerd Immersion, Fred from How to D&D, Caleb from the Blanco channel, Mr. Tarask, Jordan from Flutes Loot, and Richmond. Juice from Master of the Game, Dungeon Class, and Denny Dicely. Let's see what's in your Ultimate DM Toolkit. Thank you very much for watching, and on to the next.